Facebook friends of your friends with Anita Perez. It's a visit with a person of high strangeness. Today we're going to talk about how Facebook friends become real friends. There's a good chance we will drag this into three shows or two. Uh, you know me, I'll change my mind at the drop of a dime. In, so in the meantime, I need to tell you about our light here. Um, three storms are approaching, so the light is constantly going to change with my glass room here. And, um, well, you just have to come along and see where we're going with this. Uh, I think you're going to recognize my guest for today in person, <laughs> Anita Perez. Hi. How are you? Very well. Very well. Look what I got. <laughs> this is, I took a picture of that. It almost, uh, actually the picture was this way. It almost looked like a pretty flower. But it's an umbrella. Yes. Maybe the second one I owned in my life, but we needed it, right? Yes, that's true. Okay, Nida. Uh, we're going to make this up as we go along. If we have to talk loud, it's no can no um no mic. No mic. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh so, so anyway, it's been a while. Uh so for a long time we've been Facebook friends. Yes. Feel free to finish my sentences, okay? Okay. Facebook friends. And then one day, uh we started talking on Skype. Skype a mm -hmm. lot. <laughs> but that that's why you met Anita on Skype, so. Yeah. And next thing you know, I get a call and say, I'm going to be there on Wednesday. <laughs> well, we had talked about the possibility of a visit, but we didn't quite know how to work it out. And then an old school friend of mine made it possible. That you reconnected with? Ann Nelson. On Facebook? Yes. Hey, see that, that's yes. a point, that's a point. And, you know. after, <laughs> after 30 some odd years, yeah. and she wanted me to come visit her, and I said, well, you know, Washington is on the same side of the continent as California is. Yes. And she said, oh, who lives in Washington? And I said, my friend Lillian does, who is your friend too. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, well, would you like to go see her? Yeah. And I said, of course I do. Of course I would. And here I am in so, Washington. So I need to arrive for the chauffeur. I actually have a picture of that. I'll, uh, at one point in the slideshow, we're going to put that in there. And that was kind of cool. Yeah, not something that I'm used to either. Me neither. <laughs> And so, so, but it, it was really, really wonderful. So, and here's Anita's here, and we have ate our way through Tombaugh there, Olympia, and Lacey, just so you know. And had a grand time doing so. Yeah. And, and we intend to continue for a little while yet. So, as uh, originally, I don't know how long Anita's going to be here, and I'm not feeling well, as you know. And so I'm trying to ram everything into what I thought was three or four days. One of the first places we went to uh, was Trader Joe's. Yes, and we got some, well, I got some marvelous pictures of a rainbow mm -hmm. and the spec spectacular sunset that generated the rainbow. Mm -hmm. And we're coming down the aisle, and here's one of our other Facebook friends. No, I, I'm i lying again. She is my physical friend. She had seen Anita on the show. That's why she recognized Anita, yeah. So here we are all, you know, Trader Joe's. You go and hug and talk and hold everybody up and nobody cares. That's the wonderful thing about it is people are polite and... And they visit. And they visit, you know, and sometimes I've been there when people dance in the aisle, so... So you like our Trader Joe's, you do? Oh, very much. Yeah. Very much. Yes, so gave her, gave her an, a rainbow. It did. Yes. I felt very welcome. Mm-hmm. 
We also had a snowstorm. Yes, indeed. A surpri surprise snowstorm that I talked about for three days. And um, it arrived. And then we were Skyping with uh, Renata. And she said, take pictures. So you did. Yeah. Uh, we got some, well, I got some beautiful, beautiful pictures of snowflakes falling and f uh, pine boughs. For trees here in the yard, mm -hmm. and maybe some fairies. Fairies, yeah. And, and so then, as we as we went from one place to another, I had an ultrasound yesterday. By the way, I'm. Um, I think I'll live for a minute here, but it's got some weird pictures there. So then we went into Eric Turnbull, um, Catherine Peel's uh, brother, which. Is another Facebook friend. It's another Facebook friend. <laughs> and there was a man standing there and he said, I'm not your Facebook friend. And I looked at him and I said, Do you want to hug too? He said, Yeah. Total stranger gave him a hug. Remember? Yes. And he seemed very nice. He was, he was <laughs> very appreciative. <laughs> yeah. And so um, that's just kind of how it's been. So, as an overall, Anita Washington. Give me your thoughts on, on our state watching. And before I forget it, right before we came in here, I, I was watching the news, and Governor Inslee has suspended the death penalty. Is that cool or what? It's incredible. It's so enlightened and progressive. I wish other states that haven't done so would also do so. So we are no kill state. Doesn't mean we don't have problems like the rest of the world, you know, but at least, uh, at least we're making an effort. Yes. I, no, I wish that it would be extended to animals. Mm -hmm. That would be a lovely thing. For us animal, uh, animal activists, I, I'm not sure if we are no skilled state or not. Give me a call. That would be of interest to us, right? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. In fact, we could do a whole show on a subject like that. Yeah. So, so, Washington, I interrupted you again. Well, I've really had a marvelous time here. Uh, in many ways, it's very much like Maine, where I've come from. Loud? In, in many ways, it's very much like Maine, which is where I've come from, where I currently live. Uh, I've lived all over the country, and I'm really strongly reminded of Denver, where I used to live. Uh, of Maine, where I used to live now, where I, <laughs> where I live now, and also in climate-wise, it reminds me of the winter in South Carolina, where I used to live. So there are many elements of various places where I've been and have lived. Uh, it seems to combine a lot of the best elements, though I, I have to say I could do without the cold damp. So, but the, the people are very friendly. I've had very good experiences here. I've made friends. I've met people that have been on my Facebook friend list. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been really quite a series of adventures. So if you was wondering why the last two weeks were somewhat awkward in weather, in events, Anita did it. <laughs> oh sure, blame me. <laughs> Just wanted to accommodate this person that fell out of the sky. <laughs> well, at least I didn't bring the sub zeros from Maine with me. We're grateful. We are very, very grateful. <laughs> yeah, it, and I can the. Uh, I don't know if you can see the wall. We don't have a camera person. Let me tell you, I have a new young person that's supposed to help me, and uh, so we did training and we're very gung ho, and he was so excited. And then he got a girlfriend. And disappeared. I rest my case. So we're struggling like always. We're doing this ourselves. And um, I wish people would get g girlfriends or wives that is cooperative because um, it's hard work, you know. But people think we just, bam, here we are, you know, and that's not the case. But anyway, I, I'm not naming names. You know who you are. <laughs> so, yeah. Go ahead. Maybe, maybe you could call this Seat of the Pants TV. 
But look how far we've come. See, yeah. uh, we went up to the, you know, of course, like, we could always go to, the, to a TCTV and we were talking about some of the old timers and how things came about. And uh, <laughs> my very, very first director was there for a minute. And uh, I remember he was just terrified the way I did those shows. And uh, back then I didn't know that a director is supposed, that's what it means. You know, do this and do this. No, I, I wasn't going to do it like that. So, And then out of that came, eventually came real TV, <laughs> I think, you know. And uh, so anyway, yeah, so you met a lot of people at the studio? Yes, yes. Uh, people who, well, one man who was already on my friend list. Mm -hmm. Dan Bennett. Dan Bennett. Mm -hmm. Dan Bennett. And uh, also Freddie, whose last name I don't mm -hmm. know. Doppler. And, ah. And uh, a gentleman named John, I think it was. He I was don't in, know his name. Yeah. He was in one of the editing suites. And oh, he yeah. Was certainly mm -hmm. friendly and very cordial. Uh, it was really nice. Mm -hmm. And I went to the orientation and met a lot of people there including your first former director. Director. Mm -hmm. He had brought somebody in. Yes. Yeah, so so anyway, you know what you know what a crazy thing is? Mount Rainier's hiding. <laughs> Mount Rainier's hiding from Anita. I've seen part of it. <laughs> She's been here almost three weeks and has never seen Mount Rainier, the whole thing. That's true. It's been hiding in the clouds. And the one peak that I got quickly disappeared. Yeah, she didn't even see it flying in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what mountains were visible when I flew in. No. But not all of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Certainly. So there was that. And, uh, but, but you had a wonderful time in San Diego, right? Oh, yes. It was a lovely, lovely visit to San Diego. <coughs> we got... Sorry fabulous. about that. I have to do this. Go ahead. We got fabulous pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend took me to Torrey Pines State Park. Wow. She also took me to La Jolla, and I got wonderful pictures of the sea lions and the coves there, mm -hmm. and just the amazing rock formations. Uh, it's San Diego is gorgeous. We drove up the 101 to Encinitas and some of the other small towns that are strung out along the highway there. Just beautiful. Southern California is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it was 70 degrees. That didn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you yes. can't. How cold was it when you left? Uh, I think it was about 74 degrees. No, when you left home, it was below oh, zero. <laughs> no, actually, no, it was 12 degrees when oh, I left 12. Maine. Mm -hmm. 12 degrees. Mm -hmm. To 74. At the yeah, to 74 degrees. You should have gotten dizzy when you got off the plane. I did. <laughs> <because> <laughs> she <actually>. did. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was more than. Um, it was more than. Over. It was more than temperature shock. It yeah. was culture shock. Everybody was smiling. <laughs> but it wasn't freezing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I had to immediately peel off several layers of clothing. Only problem with Washington State is uh, people don't dress appropriate for the weather. The li you can't see the lines on the highway. You've got the bicycle, the bicycle lanes in the middle. And people, w actually, I read in the paper today a 15 year old got hit on Marlin Road. Now, Yes, we went to the Oriental store yesterday, and that was, my intent was to go Marlon Road. But I decided against it because it's so dark, and you got people walking around in dark clothes, and, and you, you hit them, you know, and I wish they would do something about that. Yeah, it's not like it's so hard to dress in lighter, brighter mm -hmm. colors, or maybe put some reflective tape on the back of your jacket. Yeah. Now, I, I know, I know uh, Washington, especially this side of the mountain, we're very liberal in everything and we don't want people to tell us what to do. But you would think people had enough brains to think of that themselves.
But since they're not, uh, maybe the government should, should tell them, I'll give you a ticket, you know. You know, I, I think that's how a lot of those rules get into place, because people just don't think. Well, it's like the seatbelt. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm i not fond of being told what to do at every turn. Yeah. But if there is a very firm reminder in place, I'm more likely to comply with things that are actually in my own best interests, yeah. like wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. You know. We had seatbelt issues. When Anita came, my seatbelt was broken. The buckle was broken and it was on order. And so when she arrived a little unexpected, um, seatbelt wasn't ready. Yes, that's true. But it is now. Well, I also had a cold, so we really didn't go anywhere. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I was sicker than a dog. She gave me her illness. Sorry. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> yeah. I tried to, I tried to be uh, respectful of your space. and She it, made me sick. That's what she did. <laughs> oh, so, so fun. And we ate and we ate and we ate, didn't we? Oh, we certainly have. <laughs> the Chinese, Korean, Middle Eastern, Eastern, yeah, German, yeah, American. <laughs> Very little. No fast food. We don't like fast food. Yeah, we have not set foot in a fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. And we're not done yet. And she went. She went to shipwreck. Oh boy, did I have an absolute bead fit. Mm -hmm. Oh, for, for those of you that don't live here, uh, explain what, what... Shipwreck beads? Please tell them what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. It's the largest bead store that in the world. It is like the Walmart of beads. It's immense. There are just... Uh, there's, there's aisles upon aisles upon aisles of nothing but beads, feathers, wire, uh, different kinds of fiber or leather thongs and those sorts of things to string beads on. It's amazing. I was really overwhelmed and every time <laughs> every time I ran into another customer they also rolled their eyes at me and said, it's overwhelming. <coughs> it's truly overwhelming. I got to see the results. Yes. Um, I got to see the results, and I was amazed how cheap it was. I'm saying the word amazed too much. I'm have to change that. If you tell me where your beads are, you talk. You talk to the friends, and I get your box. Um, I'm actually not sure. <laughs> I've packed everything up several times to try and keep my traveling gear organized and. That's what we're gonna do. This that's what we're gonna do. When uh here uh, along here somewhere we're gonna put an insert in here of some of the pictures that Anita took. Uh yes. out of thousands she took. And then during that time period we're always gonna also gonna show you what she bought. Yes. You know? Yeah, I would be glad to mm -hmm. do that. I couldn't believe how reasonable that was. The deals are incredible and just by good fortune, I happened to arrive on a sale day when certain selected items were half off. I was, <laughs> how shall I say, I, bead greed. <laughs> that was the day I was really ill and I had actually had to stay, you know, had bed rest. And Barbara Lisa, which you've met, Barbara Lisa took her and um, they were gone all day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we had a ball. Yeah. And the people that work there are wonderful. They're so pleasant and very knowledgeable. They really, really know their products and they are so willing to help and work with you. They're great. Yeah, and then yesterday we made a blitz trip through Lacey. Yes. We went to Marshalls and Tuesday morning. I think it's called Tuesday morning, and we, we, we went everywhere. But the weather is just really bad. 
and um, we so enjoyed uh, mm -hmm. Middle Eastern food. It's Fura's restaurant. Is yeah, I don't know the name of it. I just go there sometimes. Sephora, I think it mm -hmm. was. And the people there were very pleasant. And they make the best baklava. Oh my goodness. And I, it had nuts in it and I couldn't eat it. So I saw some milk that I looked very sweet. So I got that. It was goat cheese. Which I love, but... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, you know when, you, when you have a vision or, or something in your head about some food, and then there it is, and you say, ah, then you bite in and it's something totally different. Yes. <laughs> oh, then I go to the hospital for my ultrasound, which was the main reason for us doing this whole lazy thing. Um, I had made the appointment myself. That was my stomach. I haven't eaten yet because I went, you know, the daylight here. So anyway, I verified it a day in advance. When we got there, they said, you got to go to Centralia. And I said, I don't think so. So they were really accommodating and uh, worked me in. Yes, the lady who took care of you was very accommodating. I told her I need to have a long talk with you. No, I don't think I said long, but I told her I needed to have a talk with her before she started. And she looked at me like, yeah, oh, here it comes. Uh, you know, probably some deranged senior or something. And then when she started, she got she got real compassionate. <laughs> yeah, when she saw the truth of the situation, <laughs> her attitude completely changed. Yeah. She was very kind. She was very sweet, yeah. She probably thought I was some nut coming through the door, telling her how to do her job. Well, I'm sure she's seen plenty of those. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said, you know, probably some deranged, deranged person. Yeah, so, listen, that's the rain, it's coming in. We we want to do the Mima Mounts, but you know, it's been so windy. And I'm almost kind of concerned about going there because so many trees are falling, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. And tell them what your highlight is before you leave. My highlight? The highlight of your trip. Going to TCTV. Oh! <laughs> that's what it is? Seeing the station was one of the great things about coming here. Uh, taking the orientation and learning about all the different things uh -huh. to do. But also, also, I was really, really uh, bowled over by the beauty of the countryside here, um, the friendliness of the people, how marvelous that was, it has been. Um, I really, ha I've had a marvelous, marvelous time. Shipwreck Beads was incredible. She's going to the powwow. That's right. Well, love, it hasn't love. happened yet. I know. So, but this is TV land. <laughs> we can tell you anything <laughs> if we so choose, right? That's but true. But we well, won't. Yes, you know. Yeah. You know. I will correct myself and tell you I'm lying. Yes. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> well, we also have been to the Chehalis Reservation. Yes. And the Nisqually Reservation. We have. To the casinos there. Uh, the folks were very very kind to eat and mm -hmm. the food was incredible you know, yeah. we, we really have been eating our way through Washington State and it I'm afraid it shows <laughs> the first place we went to was Wagner's for black forest cake so when we went to Red Wind um, they had black forest cake well, like it arrived, and there was actually less than this. It arrived, and I said, oh, look at it. It's too dark. And I was just complaining, right? And I'm thinking, That's, they can't call that black forest cake because it's too dark. And it's too this. I took one bite, and I tell you what, I'm never going to have another piece of black forest. It was so good. It was the best black forest cake that didn't look like it I've ever had. <laughs> It looked scrumptious. I should have had two pieces. I had the 
grasshopper pie, mm -hmm. and it was beyond fabulous. It was so good. It, you know, you know, I, I'm really guilty of this. I look at things and then immediately, um, I go forward and it's this and it's that. It, almost investigatively, and um, I have this idea of what I needed, wanted to be, and what it really is. And lots of times, I stress myself out about things that aren't even there, because all the possibilities I thought about never even happened. So I wasted all that energy bitching about that piece of cake, and it was all good. That's a lesson here, no? Yes. 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 And we had the most amazing selection of foods to choose from. I had duck and salmon at the same, and crab, at the same meal. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. And I'm afraid I ate entirely too much, but it was so much fun. And I so ate fun. fried bread. That's all I cared about was fried, fried bread. Anyway, this was not going to air before the power. Uh, but the Facebook friends, um, they, I have, I post information about powers, where they're located, uh, in what states, at what time. So if you get to go, uh, you know, I'll keep, we'll, we'll keep you informed with that. And at one point, not on this show, I don't think, but then maybe so, we will, we will put some fancy dancing in here for you. And um, so... We're going to stop here and show you, give you a visual of what what Anita is telling you. And um, well, um, yeah, we'll see after a while, huh? The powwow is going to be on the 15th and 16th. Mm -hmm. It's not going to end time, so. Of, uh, well, mm -hmm. of February. Uh, yeah. We will have been there by the time you see this. Yes. Uh, and it's the Squaxin Reservation. It's in Shelton, yeah, at the, um, oh, in, Sh in Shelton at Little Creek. Yeah, at Little Creek. So, here's the insert, and then we'll see you after a while. First I went to San Diego. That's me with Mimosa. San Diego at night. Beautiful from the air, from the plain. Scrub flowers, seals on the rocks, misty mountain highway, rocks that look like sphinxes, Torrey Pines State Park, more Torrey Pines, good advice, beautiful blue Pacific, a watcher on the cliffs, and with her personal trainer Nick. Anne, brave soul, coming down the hill and riding mimosa. That's me. Beautiful brown pelicans and a cave in the bush. Eroded sandstone cliffs. Beautiful cove at La Jolla. A view across the bay. Wonderful rocks. Beautiful, beautiful waters and beautiful pa majestic palms. Encinitas, eroded sandstone cliffs, the eye in the sky, the blue Pacific, me again, a lone pine, closer to the lone pine. Another solitary tree. Next I went to Washington, where I was treated to wonderful views of sunsets and met people from TCTV. Wonderful views of horses, views from the air when I was coming in on the plane, visits to TCTV studios, a carved lion, beautiful mountain views, mounds, 
Beautiful mountain views. More beautiful mountain views. More beautiful aerial views. Mountains and mountains and mountains. From above and from below. More sunsets. Murals in Centralia. A beautiful lone tree. That's where the salt water meets the fresh. A wonderful original painting. More wonderful original paintings by our friend Dan Bennett. Beautiful use of color. Beautiful use of design. Very imaginative. Great colors. More sunsets. Maybe it's a fairy. Rainbow at Trader Joe's. Savannah at Shipwreck Beads. Shipwreck Beads. Bead Greed. A hand painted sign in Centralia. Snow in a mist falling from pines. Beautiful fir trees in the snowstorm. The grid at Studio A. Sunset. TV for you by you. Snow falling through the pines. This beautiful decorated water tower. The control room at Studio at the TCTV. Dan Bennett. And the supply room at TCTV. Fur bows. More sunsets. Freddy! The ghost of Rainier. What's up in the hill and some horses? Aerial views. Studio A. Yes. And Lillian. And here I am, and that's it, folks. As promised, here is the beads that Anita bought at Shipwreck. Can you tell that I have a thing for pearls? No, I can not. So tell me about it. Well, I have a thing for pearls. I heard you caught a sale day. I certainly did. 50% off on beautiful, unusual shapes and sizes. That's pretty good. These are exquisite. We are no longer going to use the word beautiful. But then... I guess I'll say bling-a-ding-ding. -ding. Very good. For the magpie in every girl. Because we did beautiful to death. The noise you hear is wind. We are in a storm. Is that your grab bag? Yes, full of amazing assorted green agates, new jade, and serpentine, I believe. I'm going to take you closer. Beats, beats everywhere. As as I've said before, bead greed. Pyrite. What is it? Fool's gold. We have a lot of that around here. And so thank you for sharing your treasures from Shipwreck Beads. Say thank you, Anita. Thank you, Anita. <laughs> You're welcome. What did you think of the rainbow? The rainbow was incredibly bright, and the thing that was most remarkable to me about it was the fact that part of it was in front of these trees. Mm -hmm. It was so brilliant, and it came to earth in front of a landscape feature. I have never seen that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, I was totally oblivious to the whole thing. I mean, I saw the rainbow, you know, but sometimes we take pictures and then when we get, when we look at them, they're really amazing. And 
you didn't show me a picture of me in, at the studio in front of the blue screen. It's not green, by the way. I got orbs on my head. Yes. Um, there are several orbs in the picture. Mm -hmm. More than one of them are right beside your head, and then there's a fainter, larger one further mm -hmm. up. And the thing is, that's a controlled environment without a bunch of moisture floating around in the air. It wasn't a raindrop, it wasn't a sun dog. Mm -hmm. There is no sun in the studio. B. There are no orbs, but then you've seen other stuff flying around in, in the studio. Now, I, I want to talk about the, the friends at, uh, at the Penn Network. Um, if you have anything interesting that you want me to put on the show, feel free to send it to me and I will work it in because uh, in the meantime, we have added you to our, is it a pool of friends? Yeah. It's a pool, a pool of pool friends. Pool of yeah. friends. Yeah. And, and it's, like I said, if there's anything you want to Skype and we'll work you in and hey, we were told that that you like Skype so well that some of the other producers have adopted the concept. Yes. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, that was the first, almost the first thing that was said during our visit to the studio, mm -hmm. right at the beginning of my visit here. Uh, he's, Freddie flat out said, I stole it. Yeah, <laughs> that he was copying you. Yeah. yeah that he stole your idea. Mm -hmm. But you can't steal what's freely given. That's right. That, that's so right. And uh, yeah, we got some wonderful new people at the station. That's uh, they're doing a lot of wonderful things and have ideas. And uh, and you know, as uh, the only thing constant in the universe is change. That's true. And I'm one. I don't want to change. I like things just the way I have it. And uh, when I don't feel well, I'm going to let you tell it because you're living it. I'm sitting in the chair and you ask me something and then what happens? Well, you have to think about your answer. Uh, but you then... You give a thoughtful answer. Then I say, it's here, it's next to this object. Uh, yes. I know where everything is, you see what I mean? And then I can actually direct the person how to find stuff, you know. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And so when I have to learn new things, it really um, rocks my world. But I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. So if, if everything's changing. So I'm going to be quiet, Anita. You talk about what you want to talk about. You're the guest. Well, Loud. Well, okay. Loud. <laughs> I usually don't have a problem with loud. Um, well, I spent entirely too much money <laughs> on beads for the most part. Um, I'm planning to make a boatload of jewelry out of the beads that I bought. Uh, I was absolutely wowed by the variety and price points of what was available. Uh, the food has been outrageously good. Uh, the appreciation for the finer things in life that has been shown to me here by the, by the folks here is just wonderful. Uh, the variety in the landscape is really amazing also because you have prairie and you have mountains and it, that part of it... Rainforest? Yeah. Lakes? Yeah. Ocean? It's gorgeous. I have to say that in many ways it really reminds me of Maine, except there's no snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, what snow you got here lasted about a day and a half. Yeah. And it was impressive while it was here, but it was so quickly gone. You, you're going to see Anita quite often uh, from, you know, going forward. First of all, uh, I'm going to be air one of her shows where we introduce you to her and uh, it, she's going to be on, on the shows a lot more often so CK can't come this year um, we had we had actually we had a series of deaths in, in my family and, uh, and then of course you know costs involved in there 
So CK won't be here till November. So in the meantime, that's Anita. And hopefully she'll, well, if she decides to move this way, then of course she can do She can do her own show and I'll be the guest again. You have been the most frequent guest on my shows on Penn yeah. and initially on Blog Talk Radio because we did start out on Blog Talk Radio. We had you on as a guest then also. Uh, but of all the people that I've had on and all of the repeat guests, you've been on the most frequently. Yeah, they people, so. people actually know me. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> and, and, and if they don't, it's, it's, they remember the accent. Yes. And they remember my, I call them my crop circle glasses. I've, I've been looking. I've, I've been looking for is uh, glasses. I've been looking for big glasses, and they aren't any. Just so you know. And those that there are, uh, they have some kind of an agreement with the designer that they can't be altered to accept prescription lenses. Yeah. So, which is kind of strange. Yeah, I. I imagine you know maybe if you found an independent optometrist who isn't impressed by that sort of thing. Yeah, and I don't have independent money at the moment. Yeah. So there goes that. No. Crop circles it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all my assets right now are in beads. <laughs> and, and, and you've been, you've been uh, able to maintain uh, your, your own TV show since you've been here? And not, yeah, well. Well, uh, no, I've been kind of on hiatus actually, but I've been co-hosting a blog talk radio show with the Vampire Metro. Yep, that's Mihai, Mihai Constantine. Constantine. Mm -hmm. And on, on Facebook, it's archived. Yes. I was, the sh I was the guest. And of course, nobody ever tells me what we're going to talk about. It, it's not just that. It's everywhere I go. Nobody seems to tell me anything. And we got so intense. We talked about alien abduction and everything. But what was so great? I had pictures to back it all up, remember? Yes, I do. And posted it. And as a result of that, we got no Facebook friends. Yes. They thought we were kidding, you know. <laughs> yeah. I guess most people don't really have the documentation to back things up. They could be standing there with a camera in their hand, and they're too overwhelmed to actually take the picture. Everything happens so fast sometimes. By the way, yeah. Nita has gone home with a camera, and then she's going to take um, video and stuff, and, and I'll put it together here on this end. Plenty of very interesting stuff happens in Maine, mm -hmm. uh, some of it highly abnormal. <laughs> So. And you wanna, you wanna get away from an abnormal place and come to a abnormal place? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's not the abnormality that I object to. <laughs> I don't really object. I, Maine has been wonderful. I love Maine. I absolutely adore it. And there are people there who I will always, always treasure. But I have perhaps some opportunities that look very promising here, so it is possible that if I can make the arrangements to do so, that I will relocate in Washington. Now, Nita, let me ask you this. We have like five minutes here. Oh. Briefly explain how you got to Maine in the first place, because you are a survivor. Yes, uh, well, a hurricane destroyed. Hurricane. Mm -hmm. A good deal of the roof of my house in South Carolina. Which one was it? I forgot. It was Hurricane Floyd. Floyd. Yes, and Floyd. That's a long time ago, but the damage was really profound. Um, I did manage to get a new roof on with FEMA money and the help of some very kind friends who came and worked on my roof. The FEMA money was only enough to buy the shingles and the tar paper and the sealant and stuff, and the nails. And that only because I went to a cut-rate location that had discontinued 
supplies. And there was not a dime left over. So really, the labor had to be for free. And I was fortunate enough to have people that thought enough of me that they came and put that roof on for free. But in the meanwhile, there was a huge deluge rainstorm that completely soaked the insulation of my house. And so I wound up with a terrible black mold problem that could not be addressed. I did everything I could. I scrubbed so hard that I actually scrubbed holes into the walls. And the, you just, you can't get rid of it. Once it really sets, takes hold in the fiber of your house, it's all over. Unless you have something like stone or steel as your structure, you can't get rid of it. So my house became very toxic and I had to leave. I couldn't sell it and I couldn't rent it because it was against the law. And also I wouldn't do that to somebody, make, sell them a place that would actually possibly kill them. Mm -hmm. So as unbelievable as it sounds, I had to give my house away so that it could be torn down. Um, hopefully my things are s being kept safe until I go and reclaim them, but I had to leave behind everything except what I could fit into my Honda Civic. And an old college friend who I reconnected with on Facebook. There you go. But, but, you, know, but you see, universe, you, you know, universe is the greatest thing to me, but sometimes it has such a sense, a sick, sick, like ill sense of humor. It will create the most horrible situations to get you where you're supposed to be. And it's not fun, but sometimes in hindsight, you say, oh, wow, that's why that happened. But it makes it so hard to get through these times. You see what I mean? Yes, it certainly and, uh, does. Yeah. And, and so many people go through that and uh, nobody talks about it anymore. So when you have, like, what's going on in politics now? Uh, Governor Christie, you know, it's like people are waiting for their money from Sandy for crying out loud. You, you know? Yeah. And then some happen, people are evacuated, then they're allowed back home and people don't think about it anymore, but we have these traumatic events that sometimes get us where we need to be. And they, they can change the course of your life yeah. for many, many years. In my case, Hurricane Floyd changed the course of my life for decades. Yeah. Not just for a few days or a few weeks or even a few months. Decades. Literally. So, I went to Maine. And I have to say that the people there were really wonderful to me. They're, Maine has this odd culture where they do not praise, they don't give compliments, they just quietly help while they grumble. <laughs> I would do well in Maine, wouldn't yes. I? I? That's the word. I grumble. I grumble over that piece of cake. <laughs> but it's once you get used to it, it's kind of endearing. <laughs> I learned a new word. It is. It's I really grumble. It's kind of cute, actually. <laughs> they, they grumble while they help you and help you and help you. They grumble. It's time to go. We're gonna grumble right out of here. <laughs> and, and then uh, co probably continue this next week, okay? Yeah. And thank you for being with us. And at this, as we take this seg segment, I don't know what we're going to show you, but it'll be good. And then we'll see you next week, huh? Yes. Grumble, grumble. <laughs> Bye.
Thank you.